NTV. Oh, voices. This is Stephen Embiid on Faith Face Switch, who got right here on Morning at NTV. And of course, this week, uh, it's now a week after the incident that was saturating widely on social media about a chairperson of a district who was uh, probably roughed up or whichever means, whichever word you want to use uh, by security officers. And this uh, was putting many people in the security circles in check and in question about their conduct. But not all of them are bad mannered. But this morning I'm speaking to a governor that is uh, the many people of Mitiana have been calling the district person as a governor for quite a long time from the times of uh, the late Major Kassiria Gwanga. But now I'm standing, I'm sitting next to um, Council Luzige Joseph, who is the chairperson of Mitiana District, and he's the person in the picture who was roughed up by security officers. Good morning, Mr. Luzige. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Stephen, and uh, our viewers. Uh, thank you for hosting me this. Thank you for hosting me this morning. Mm. And I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Chairman, from what we saw from a two minute and a half uh, video that was saturating, what don't we know, what haven't you told the world about what happened then, especially when you were being taken away by the security officers? Yeah, well, what happened after, of course, what you saw in the video, and uh, when all that happened, uh, what I really wanted was to see how I could come out how I could come out um, mm. uh, th from that scene when I'm alive and okay. So I actually in my mind, I, uh, uh, before that I was trying to call their commandant who, is, who was Lieutenant Kakonge to come and intervene but he wasn't picking. Uh, when you saw the video, I was trying to, I was actually ha holding my phone trying to call him and he wasn't picking. So I was um, trying to imagine how I would get out of that scene, get off from that scene when I'm alive. Were you put under detention? No, 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 of course. Actually, from what you see after the picture, when one of them suggested that they take me to the cells mm. uh, uh, at the police station, I said it is okay. Because one, I thought that was one of the avenues of how I could escape that, that scenario. And, but of course, as we are approaching the police station, their commandant was there. I think he was deploying them. And then when he saw them bringing me, he ran towards us and he, he was asking them in Swahili what they were doing. And then he, he arrested one of them. After I told him that these guys were manhandling me, after I found them beating a woman who was uh, traveling on a riding on a border border, uh, being carried on a border border, so he arrested them and um, took them to the, to, to, they have, I think, a cell. They have a mm. cell at their camp. So he took one of them, actually. And then I also told him there were five. Then I'm told they, they, they were also arrested. And that's the time also when my RDC came in and uh, said he was sorry for what happened. Uh, basically, that is what happened. While Chairman, we I would say that it was fortunate and unfortunate that it was you, the chairperson, because many people have been on time and again been complaining about this conduct of many of the security officers and people like you, different chairpersons, mm -hmm. different uh, authorities have been quiet about, about what, was ha what has been happening to mm -hmm. the local people. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that incident uh, was an eye-opener I would, I would say so, I would rather say so, because uh, first of all, even my own people were telling me a number of times that they were being uh, assaulted by, uh, by those LDUs, by those soldiers, and I could raise these complaints with, the, with my other colleagues with whom we run, we administer Mitiana District, specifically the RDC and the DPC. I hadn't actually shared this information with the RPC because in most cases I only escalate to the RPC mm -hmm. when I've not got justice below. But in, uh, most of the times they could tell me that these incidents were not true. And I hadn't taken my time off actually to visit any of these individuals who were complaining. Until two days before my incident, one of, uh, there's an aspirant for Mitiana municipality seat called Kakumba. Mm. Uh, and then I saw a video clip saturating around Mitiana and on social media when he was also being manhandled. So I confronted my RDC and I, I told and the other people, I told them that you see these soldiers are manhandling people and they're, they're not actually behaving so well. And then uh, it was like, ah, some of these people are lying. And in fact, I heard that he was in a bar and when I talked to him, he said, no, I was actually moving on my own. Then I met them that confiscated a telephone phone from a phone from um, a, was it a young a certain lady and then when I intervened that is when they assaulted me mm. so and uh, shortly after that I was, uh, as I was leaving my office at around 6 p.m. I was moving I wanted to go to uh, an ATM of Centenary Bank which is my bank 
to pick some money. Uh, when I saw there was some kind of a queue, I moved ahead. And when I moved ahead, I, that's when I found them uh, actually assaulting a woman who had uh, who was being who was riding. Told she was a pregnant woman. Yes, and, mm. and she was actually going to the hospital. And so when they were beating her, and I saw others ahead also trying attempting to beat another border border rider who was coming in that direction. So I turned my vehicle parked in the road and I confronted them. Have you been able to establish the, co uh, the situation of that woman who was also pregnant, who was beaten by the security officers? Incidentally, by the time, uh, as I was turning my vehicle, the RDC came in. Mm. The RDC got out of the car, and as I was driving, I told the RDC that that woman has been beaten by those soldiers moving on ahead. And then I saw the RDC moving towards the woman, and uh, I thought he had he had picked her particulars so i think he has the particulars of the woman from there i, I didn't actually follow up the woman i didn't also talk to her physically i was stopped by bystanders people who were um, uh, around the chairman they're beating that woman can you please intervene mm. people were telling me those soldiers are beating women uh, i mean that woman can you please stop them so i left the other dc interviewing the woman so I think he might be having contact. This with week, uh, the army says that the, the army court is going to sit in Mtiana. You are a witness. Are you going to testify against these four officers who were arrested? Yes, certainly I will, because I want justice. Mm. Because that is certainly we must assist the UPDF to weed some out of the rotten, um, some, some of these personnel who are not actually good. And I'm looking forward to the court. And one of the, I made those demands, but before I could make it, the Deputy Commander Land Forces, Major General Sam Kavma, who had been tasked by the CDF to come and talk to me, and the people of Mitiana, assured us that the UPDF as an institution, first of all, does not condone those activities. And then secondly, that those were actions of a few individuals, and then that they were, they were going to see that justice is done. Mm. So it's definitely, I am looking forward to the court. I will testify, and uh, I know they've taken even statements from other people like the person who took the video, um, we took, we, they took down our statements, and so we are looking forward for the, for the marshal in Mitiana. Uh, toward, there is a place called Ibuswa Bulongo in Mitiana. Uh, I guess you have so much about knowledge about, about that place. Uh, towards the end of April, there is uh, the MP for Mitiana Municipality, who is Francis Zake. Mm -hmm. He was also arrested by security officers who was trying to uh, give the, he says he was trying to give relief to the people of Mitiana. Uh, one of the guidelines that is against uh, the COVID-19 uh, efforts to fight this disease. Mm -hmm. But he was also arrested, and also you, the chairperson, was arrested in defiance of these guidelines. What should be done? And but was be arrested? He was arrested, mm -hmm. and you were also taken by street so officers. Me I, was, me, I was just assaulted. I wasn't... Yeah, I was just assaulted, and I was not defying. And you were taken in. Yes. Whatever, you, whatever I you want to call it. In. But in just in trying to put these guidelines in, pl in place, mm. uh, you authorities, you the leaders, what should be done? What are the responsibilities of the responsibilities of the people? And you the leaders, make sure that yes, we have a peaceful coexistence between the security officers and the people. First of all, I think uh, one, I must be very clear on this. We must follow the guidelines, the directives as issued by the president. Mm. Because COVID yes, Kakati nganzize yoku nsongeli jyo gambi enti tunabela utu chanaba kumadembe. Nze chisoke la dalandoza that um, our local defense unit personnel need to be given special training and tactics in handling civilians. Because the chaba lesa kulaba antivaya amba ko poliso kuma mubantu. Actually kuma abantu nebi yawe. So in most cases bobuta fana konga maje ya gaburi jo mm. boba bila nyomu bantu kubanga echisoka bava mu bantu bava kubyalo era abasinga obunji je badayo okutrayo okuyamba ko kuma edembe mu bantu nolecho chitegeza betaga skills ezenja ulo obuta fana konga maje gali kwa maje agali original goga tira kuvayo nga alwe mbere remere de police nga tembere eri aggression maybe a foreign country nga batulumbye obanga waliwo obuyekera something like that Neka katiba LD yubafi. So they need special training in community policing. Ngaba police jebafuna. Kwa mu police tumu expecting under normal circumstances. Okumanya how to handle civilians. Not to use that extra force.
Okay, thank you so much. He's the governor of Mitiana district. Uh, his council Luzige Joseph is also a, form, a founder member of UID, but now he's seated comfortably <laughs> in the yellow bus. This is Stephen Mbidon Fefe Chibuga, and I've been having conversation with him. And of course, earlier on, we had uh, Chamag Andrew Chamagero together with Flavia Tumusime. They are in the studio from 6.30 to now. And of course, from me and the technical crew, we say thank you and keep it here on Morning at NTV every morning. And of course, at 9 a.m., Faida Nakazu is coming on with Mwasumtia. Wish you a blessed week.